Ricky, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Great to have you back on this mon Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Holy crap, this week's flying. Wow, big changes overnight here in the uh, Pilbara. For me, oh, not for me, I knew I was stuck here. Um, unfortunately, I've got to work now. Um, I'm gonna have to do two weeks of night shift back to back with no break. Oh, well, that's life, as I said to you yesterday. I've probably been one of the lucky ones I haven't had to do too much because I had a lot of holiday. I had holidays with the move and the house move and stuff. Um, I've had other things that I've, I've had to deal with this year. But, um, yeah, in the last year and a half, COVID's affected everyone in some sort of way and everyone sort of copped it at some time or the other. Well, I guess it's my turn. But, again, Perth's gone into a full lockdown or WA's gone into a full lockdown, so... No one can leave site now until I think Saturday they reassess, but they had a, they found another one. It's the third one they found today, so looks like that means probably be at least another week uh, until we're due to start work again anyway. So I can't see us having a break. I'm not sure how that'll work. It'll end up being five weeks straight with uh, no with only 24 hours off in between. So I'm sure they'll work it out. We're supposed to have 48 hours off going swapping back to day shift. So I'm assuming that'll be next Monday or something. They'll have to work out something. If they can't get people up, they'll either have to uh, shut the mine for, I guess, a day or do something. Who knows? I'm sure they'll have a... There's a lot of big brains out there that are above my pay grade that are working on that, and I'm sure they'll have all our best interests, interests in uh, mind. <laughs> they won't be thinking about profit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, not much fun. At least, yeah, we're all here. So another week of night shift. So be the same time for the next week. Obviously, I was gonna. This was gonna be last night tonight, and then back to day shift. Or I would have been on basically R and R here, but I'm not. So I'll be working. So we'll just be continuing on with the show. How cool is that? Cool bananas. Now, um, I'll, what I'll do is I've got two videos two more product reviews and unboxings that I've got for this week planned in for the video. So I'll do a little one Wednesday night and then another decent, the other decent one, which will be, I'll put up for Friday night. And then, so then we'll back into a normal program and then next Friday will be another photo. We'll get back into our South Coast uh, adventures. We've got, a, I think, three or four episodes left of that. Um, I hope you have been enjoying that, the South Coast episodes if you don't know what the hell i'm talking about and you've just popped by thank you very much i do appreciate it if you're just listening and don't know where the hell i'm talking about south coast um, myself and my family had a holiday in the south coast of western australia uh, one of the most beautiful places on the planet uh, if you've never read about it or seen anything i'm sure you would have seen some instagram photos either of mine or other people's of elephant rocks uh, Lucky Bay, um, wineries, there's so much down there. It's an amazing, amazing part of the world. It's a bit of an unkept secret. And, well, not, it's not a well-kept secret, I guess, and not an unkept secret. It's, it, it's there, but it's just generally for some reason, I guess that we're just a bit spoilt in Australia where we just don't go. And I think what the biggest difference is, is Australia's, Australians are terrible at advertising and selling our stuff. Uh, a place like that, anywhere else in the world, would be would be put up on a pedestal, much like an Iceland or a Canada or anything like that. That's how good it is. So it's we just we just don't do that in Australia. It's just not it's just not what we do. So if we ever get out of this COVID thing, if it ever stops, <laughs> it doesn't look that way at the moment, does it? It looks like a uh, endless loop of fun. Uh, Definitely one of those bucket list places that you need to, if you ever get to Australia, yeah, sure, you've got Sydney Harbour and it's a it's a poxy bridge and it's an opera house. They look great, but if you want to go and see some really nice stuff, if you're into landscapes, into photography, which I'm assuming that's why you're here, uh, then definitely come and check that out. It's up there with your Kakadus and the Territory, Karen Genie's the other spot. There's so many spots. We're very, very blessed in that in that regard in Australia with nature that's just abounds us. It's even in our national anthem, nature that abounds us. Very, very cool. 
Um, so yeah, so we've got three or four more episodes. It was about a 16 day trip uh, in a minivan, a three year old, my three year old son, Jack, my lovely wife, touring around there. So if you haven't seen it, go check Photo Journeys. You would you'll be able to catch up on all those videos and check out where we're up to. And we've just hit Esperance. I think last episode was our first, first doses of Esperance. Um, and yeah, Esperance in Albany, and it's a pretty amazing spot. Uh, we're into the good, good stuff. So some of the photos I've been editing this week as well, in between the everything else, uh, have uh, looked pretty amazing and some really good stuff out of the Mini 2. A couple of just pearlers of the sunset I got over Esperance Harbour with the Mini 2. So <clears throat> very excited. Some great photos there and should be some very cool video. Okie doke. Now, news-wise, we need to get the email up. I forgot about my email. Now, Infinex, if you haven't heard of Infinex, they're not a phone company. They're sort of uh, mostly around Asia as much. Uh, they have a new phone out. It's a prototype, so this is not a phone that's going to be released, but it's pretty cool. I was watching on Unbox Therapy. And its biggest claim to fame, I guess, is the one that everyone's going to be talking about, is this insane charging. Now, this thing is 160 watts charging, and it went from dead flat to 100%, 4,000 milliamp battery in 10 minutes, 48 seconds, I think. Uh, Lou had it on uh, Unbox Therapy, so it looked pretty cool, like the... I think I've said a few times with phones, they're really stagnated and it's very hard for them to find a new feature to sell the phone. Uh, it used to be processors. Processors have all, everyone, everyone's got a triple eight Snapdragon. Apple's got their A15s. Uh, you know, sort of uh, camera lenses then become the big thing. Uh, they've all got 64 megapixels or 100 million megapixel cameras. Um, so they're sort of, and they keep, they find something and everyone does it and then they got to find something new. Um, charging seems to be that thing at the moment. 120 hertz, screen refresh rate, that was the other one. 120 hertz, 144 hertz. Uh, I think there's even maybe some that are pushing 200. So they always try to outbeat each other. Charging seems to be the one at the moment that everyone's trying to do. And 160 watt charging is pretty crazy. Now I guess... And then I've seen a lot of the comments on the videos like, oh, it's going to, you know, how it's going to cook the battery. The battery's not going to last long and all that. And I, don't, I guess depending on how much the phone costs, if it's only a three, four hundred dollar phone uh, and it's got this charging tech, if you only want it to last a year, but you're a business person, you need to constantly charge the phone and have full battery and be talking all day, well, then I, it's probably not going to matter. So it, it all, I guess, all depends on your perception and your what you need it for and how you're going to use it. So it's a little tricky to sort of have a crack at and go, oh, yeah, it's probably not going to last, but does it need to last? That's It's achieving what I need, 160 watts. 10 minutes is ridiculous. That's insane. Uh, very, very cool. In that regard, you don't have to leave your phone plugged in overnight. You can just basically, as I think Lou said, uh, get up in the morning, plug it in while you're brushing your teeth and having a shower, and by the time you get out, you get a full phone, so you're laughing. So very, very cool in, in that respect. And I said, great, really good for business people, I think the charging factor. You can come back to the office, get in the office, right, oh, I've got to get out to another meeting, ah, shivers, the phone's flat, right here, hang on, go around, print off what you need for the next meeting, get your stuff, grab a quick bite to eat, come back, go to the toilet, grab your phone, boot out, you're good for the rest of the day. So I think business-wise, charging's quite quite handy for us general users uh it's probably not going to matter because you can either plug it in while you're sitting next to your computer when you're going to have it most of the day or in your office you can have it plugged in so it really doesn't you don't really need a fast charger i don't think you really need a, a, a super fast charger at all so now the other thing on that the infinex have a look go check out the video on unbox therapy the size of the friggin charger it is insane it's literally a brick um it'd be it's got to weigh, the, the charger has to weigh nearly half a kilo by the size of it. It was ridiculous. It's this monster block with these, and then, a, and then an adapter down to the American bloke, the little two pins. Uh, and it just, <laughs> the, and that's the bit that wasn't mentioned. It's like, yeah, it's 160 watt, but look at the charger. It's like 
there's no way you're going to be taking that with you in your backpack. That's just crazy. So that was that's the only thing. It's great to have the charging, but when it's a big brick, well, it's no one's going to get that. So that was the only disappointing. Other good thing about the phone, obviously, it had all the normal stuff that you get on the phone, and I'll I'll put all the details down in the description. I won't bore you with all that sort of stuff. It's just a general level phone. It's, as I said, it's a prototype. It's going to be coming out. It's, it's got some good stuff in it, but uh, the charging was the big one. And on the back, it had a uh, LED screen uh, at, that showed off the charging. When it was charging, you could have this light on, and the the light sort of lit up through the Now logo, which was the model, I guess, for the phone. So it had some really good ideas and different ways to look at the phones. Myself, personally, I think uh, I think it's uh, Huawei that put the small screen on the back and there's been a couple of renders made for Apple to put a screen on the back. I think that is the next thing because then they can attack the action camera market, the, the GoPros, the Insta 361X, if you put that camera on the back, why can't your phone be a 360 camera? Why can't you, you can then, as a vlogger or whatever, use that screen on the back to line up your shot. We all use it. Um, if you're looking at video, it's very hard to stare there and not know that you're in frame and you, you can't move if you don't, if you think you're gonna go off screen and you're trying to, you wanna stay in the focus point and all that stuff. And you can do that when you've got a screen on the side of your camera. Uh, on a phone, and I've used the, the iPhone, my iPhone 12 many, many times, and I use it when I'm ever uh, hiking now. Uh, I'm doing it, and I'm hoping that I'm in frame. Uh, God forbid I cut my head off, and there's a few times where my head's been out, and, yeah, that's one of the downsides. So, look, I think it's pretty cool, and I think that's sort of the next avenue. But the Infinex, pretty cool sort of an idea, and the charging is getting crazy. Now, um, Canon RF 14 to 35, uh, new photos, and well, there's new photo up, and the specs are pretty much out for that one. Um, nothing true, looking at 16 elements, 12 groups, um, minimum focus difference of 0.2, uh, of 2, 0.2 of a meter, so 20 centimeters. That's pretty darn good. That's going to be good. It's Look, it's going to be an amazing lens when it comes out. Uh, nine aperture blades, doesn't say if they're curved or whatever. We're, we're still going to get that final bit once it does get released. Having said that, we uh, Canon Rumors the other day did say that they should be released with the R, R3, which was supposed to be released tomorrow. Now, some new things have happened overnight where that might possibly change. It might not be till next week. And maybe another development tease to us and I'm hoping it's not another development tease I think that that's over and done can we please be over with the development announcements uh, the last year year and a half has been everyone bringing out the development announcement for six months and then you get to see the product it's I think you get over things and I'm think I'm definitely over these constant like little drip feeding us the uh, details just either just give it to us like Sony does or just don't tell us because it's it's getting a little bit annoying and it's sort of um I don't like really reporting about it when there's really not much there but oh, just, yeah just like you want it if you know it's there and you're like three quarters done just tell us what it's gonna have you know like give us throw a dog a bone <laughs> but look it looks like a great lens and obviously hopefully hopefully we Oh, hopefully the R3 does get released tomorrow. I think everyone's ready for it. We've had enough waiting for it. We want to know everything about it. Let's just do it tomorrow, Canon. Get it done and dusted. Please, Canon. That'd be great. Right, that's sorted. I'm sure they'll listen to me. <laughs> um, now, uh, the last one. You've seen on the thumbnail, wow. What a, now, if you, are you a watch person? Um, I'm a bit of a watch person. I I had my dream watch. Uh, things got tight for us about a year ago, and to do anything with the channel, I needed some money, so I sold it. Sold my beautiful Tag Heuer watch. Uh, it was a limited edition carbon fiber. It was my favourite possession, and uh, I had to sell it. Basically, it was just sitting there. I was too scared to wear it out. It was worth too much money. So anyway, I sold it, and I um, yeah, put it into this business. Um, yeah, so it was, a, it was a sad day for me. So, but 
I am a bit of a watch guy. I do love mechanical watches. I do love uh, Patek Phillips and all those amazing watches they are. Uh, there's some amazing, brilliant people out there. These build these just artworks on your wrist. Um, and that one, this one we're going to talk about today is amazing from Jacob & Co Jewelers. They've teamed up with Bugatti and they've made the Bugatti Chiron watch. Limited to uh, 126 pieces worldwide. This is a watch, uh, depending on the spec one and if what you've got, like the one I've got, there, there's a clear sapphire crystal, which is just ridiculous. Um, 280,000 US around that ballpark. So 280, probably 300 plus thousand US dollars. So we're looking 400, looking nearly half a million dollars Australian to strap that bad boy in your wrist. But what a beast. It has the Chiron engine in it, uh, the W16 engine in it, the pistons move and everything like that. It is, again, the, as I said, these watchmakers are just insane. It is an absolute work of art and just amazing and it must you have to be super mega rich to own one of these just for the fact that you've got to wear that out and you would just be crapping your pants every time you move because you wouldn't want to scratch it or lose it or oh, it just must be nerve-wracking or you're just super rich and you don't care if you lose it so yeah for me i'd be crapping myself <laughs> I said I never might tag you, and it was nowhere near that. I think mine cost like six or seven thousand um, when I bought it. When I first started back in mining, that was my sort of, you know, I'm making good money on. I buy something I really, really want, uh, and I was scared to wear that out in case it got damaged. It was only a special occasion watch, so like they're just crazy, like three hundred thousand US. You could buy nearly buy a house with what's. The, this watch is worth but it is a thing of beauty and yeah very very cool um, so you can go actually go over check out Bucati's page they've got a couple of different models uh, and go check it out they are what if you're not into watches be careful because it's very easy to get addicted and once you start seeing these just amazing just like little mechanical and everything's mechanical so there's no batteries or anything it's all wound up with springs and rubies for bearings and oh it's just crazy it's a crazy world and uh yeah very beautiful world so i do appreciate what they do they are masters of their art so yeah one day i would like to be a master of something <laughs> okay dake, and that's it for another day hope you all have a fantastic day i will see you all again tomorrow wednesday show okay dake, see you soon we're coming this way that way I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.